How's it going? This is Matt, and this is my 97 Pontiac Trans Am, and I want to talk to you about the OBD2 OptiSpark. This guy right here. We're just going to solely go after this. Uh, we're just going to talk. I'm going to make some more videos over time, but uh, this video is going to be basically just the OptiSpark. And the 96 OptiSpark, there's a few different styles, but we're going to base this video basically on just the 96 and 97, the Vinted. Here's the Vince. And, um, I'm just gonna explain. I've owned this car since 2013. I've done um, a lot of work to it over the years, and I just wanna, you know, talk to you about the do's and don'ts and try to explain about the OptiSpark. Try to keep your old LT1 on the road for as long as possible. So let's go after the OptiSpark itself. This is the vented. Uh, here's the vents. Uh, one goes to the intake manifold. The other one comes to the elbow. They're very crucial to a long life um, OptiSpark. Um, there's two check valves on the intake side. Those go bad all the time. I just recommend replacing them. I got two check valves at AutoZone for six bucks. Um, the way to check it is engine running. The one that's going to the snorkel, the vacuum line going to the snorkel needs to pull the vacuum at idle. Um, another thing that goes wrong on this, notoriously, is the, the bearing wear. Now, um, the only uh, OptiSpark I would recommend buying is the AC Delco unit because it has the Mitsubishi sensor. Um, it's remanufactured, it's kind of pricey, it comes with a core, $75 core, it's about close to $400. Bucks. Um, I didn't have that kind of money, so what I did was I went to a junkyard and I um, looked through a whole bunch of cars. I'm here in Southern California, so there's a bunch of cars, LT1s, and I found a good used uh, optical sensor, a Mitsubishi sensor. Like I said, you should only put the Mitsubishi sensor in. Um, and the only one that comes with one is the AC Delco Reman. But um, I bought the API unit off eBay. It's 100 bucks. It comes with a brand new bearing. Um, like I said, I don't recommend reusing the bearing because it starts to wobble over time. It's, it'll start bucking at five, 5,000 and work its way down to like 3,000 RPM. So you just want to throw away the bearing. Um, a lot of guys try to do the cap and rotor, but you could buy the API and get the new bearing and put your Mitsubishi sensor in like I did. Uh, another tech tip is this, there's a, there's a seal that goes on the distributor. It's a Teflon. Um, they're notorious for leaking oil onto the crankshaft and, and just spinning oil all over the engine compartment. So I recommend on the timing cover, putting a thick piece of silicone bead of silicone around this lip and it'll never leak um, all right let's get started testing the optus bar is kind of difficult uh, you're gonna need a you're gonna need a, a lab scope I bought this off eBay this is a Sun model for a hundred bucks it's a 90s works great uh, you might not be able to see with the camera very good but I'm gonna try my best so basically, uh, the OptiSpark is the crank and cam positioning sensor for this car. It's all in one and the distributor. Now I know you're going to be like, wait a minute, the 96, 97 has a crankshaft positioning sensor. That was a requirement to the OBD2 uh, for misfiring monitors. It has nothing to do with ignition timing, fuel injection pulses, nothing. So um, it's only there for emission standards for the misfiring monitor. So you're gonna get two five volt, five volt uh, reference um, to the OptiSpark itself, and then you're gonna get two signal wires coming back. Now the, the two hot five volts are purple and white and red and black, and the two signals are gonna be solid red and black and pink. Now what you're looking for the signal wires, uh, you're gonna get eight, uh, eight different uh, square waves for the low, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be your low signal, and then the high signal is going to be like fence post. They're going to be real close together, a nice good square wave. Um, you, you're not looking for fallout. And um, my little tech tip is to go not go through the OptiSpark, but go through the ignition control module. Um, it's right next to the coil, and um, it's going to leave a nice clean square wave. And uh, when you rev it up, it's going to close together. It's going to be a two to four volts in AC, and this is where I would recommend testing the OptiSpark on this because you get two waves, 
into the PCM and then you get the one that grounds the coil. So that's the one I would go after. Um, so this is the ignition control module. Here, let me get a little closer. And this white wire is the two to four volt signal wire, AC. I relocated mine over by the fuse box because it does, it does get really hot because it's the ground of the coil. And this is what you're looking for, a nice clean square wave. Now I'm gonna show you on a multimeter and the, the Sun uh, digital lab scope. So let's get started with a multimeter. While it's running, it should be around one to four volts, I would say. You're gonna put it on the AC, you're gonna ground the black wire, and then you're gonna back probe the white wire on the ignition control module. Let's start her up. So I'm getting about 1.6 volts. Now this is a square wave. Two volts when I revved it up, gave it some gas. Now we're going to look for the square wave. Now this is very important. You're going to have to record it on your uh, lab scope. So you need a lab scope that records because it's what's happening is so fast that you're not going to see it with your naked eye. So here's the square square waves itself, if you can see. Um, and they'll get they'll tighten up over time when you rev it up. Now you're gonna see um, see how it's perfectly square and it's moving. When you rev the engine, they're gonna get smaller and tighten up. What you're looking for is fallout lines that are not in sync with the pattern. That means the signal is struggling. And that's solely based on the OptiSpark. It tells the PCM when to fire the coil. That signal is based off those two signals from the OptiSpark. This is a much easier way to test the OptiSpark since you're going to be looking at both signals to the PCM and the PCM is going to be sending one square wave to the coil. So I would recommend going after the white wire on the ICM. And it'll look like this square wave. It's going to be a white 2 to 4 volts AC. Now the digital multimeter, the auto ranging, I bought this from AutoZone for 25 bucks. It's not going to tell you, it's not going to show you the fallout, it's going to show you if it's bad. It won't tell you if it's good, it'll just tell you if it's bad. You see it, if you see it go offline, you rev it up, it starts misfiring, you don't got a signal. So there's no way to prove the OptiSpark is good with this. The only way is with the lab scope, which is expensive, but it's well worth getting for such an old car. Since the OBD2, you cannot get the signal from the OBD2 ports. And uh, yeah, that's my video. I hope it helps keep those LT1s on the road for much longer. Uh, like I said, um, if you don't know a lot about it, Mitsubishi Sensor. New bearing, cap and rotor, API. Um, that's basically it. It's notorious for uh, stalling. Uh, if you get the Chinese sensor, they overheat and you'll just be stranded somewhere. And then all of a sudden it'll start and run good. So uh, keep that in mind. AC Delco Reman or use the Mitsubishi sensor used with a different cap, rotor, and bearing. All right, guys. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.